Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. When the US banking sector collapsed 17 years ago, it sent shockwaves around the world that resulted in the worst financial crisis since the Great Depression. Now the US is weathering its worst bank failure since then. So why did Silicon Valley Bank collapse? And what implications could it have for us here in Australia? Today, ABC business reporter Nassim Kadem on the fragile banking system and how quickly things can unravel. Nassim, SVB, or the Silicon Valley Bank, it's really a bank that not many of us would have heard of until this week, of course. So what exactly is it? So Silicon Valley Bank is a bank that really was focused on servicing the tech sector and the startup sector, because often when you just start out a company, it's very hard to get funding and the traditional banks won't give you the money. Uh, so this bank was a major bank that led to a lot of the uh, startups that you see um, in Silicon Valley and beyond. At Silicon Valley Bank, we deal in innovation. We work with the entrepreneurs, companies, and investors that are defining what comes next. This means we have the coolest clients of any bank. So it was a bank that stepped in when there was all these new startups, tech startups. So it, it was a bank that took a risk on them. It, it said, sure, we, we'll back you on this. Exactly. And that, I mean, that's the nature of startups, right? You need people yeah. to back you. And often, you know, people get, even in the very early stages, they'll go to their friends and family to try and get funding. Uh, and then they'll kind of scale up and they'll go to venture capital funds and then ultimately bank. So mm. uh, it was a really crucial part of funding for the tech sector. Mm, And as the tech sector got big and got big quickly, so did SVB, the Silicon Valley Bank. I can see that in 2018, it had just over 50 billion in assets. And then by 2023, it had 200 billion. So it was a big deal. Yeah, it was a it was a really significant player. Uh, as a result, anybody who sort of saw themselves moving up in the in the tech sector uh, would go to this bank to try and get funding. And it was the 16th largest bank in America before it mm-hmm. collapsed. Uh, so this makes it the biggest bank failure now since the global financial crisis of 2008. Mm-hmm. About half of all venture capital funded startups in the US were customers of SVP. And that people estimated was about 65,000 startups. So it is quite massive. As you can see, we're not a typical bank. Silicon Valley Bank is making next happen now. Okay, so it had a lot of customers. When did these customers first realise that something was going a bit wrong? So really the the dire situation unfolded on March 8, and that was when the bank reported a US $1.8 billion loss on the sale of US Treasury securities. What happened was during the pandemic, SVB and many other banks were taking on more deposits than they could lend out to borrowers. So in 2021, deposits at SVB doubled. Whatever the bank couldn't lend out was instead invested in what they saw at the time as very safe U.S. Treasury securities. Mm -hmm. Um, But this was really a a risky uh, proposition because at the time rates were really low and when interest rates went up, that meant that they had more liabilities on their books and they were trying to get rid of those liabilities and couldn't. And, uh, you know, that's what spooked everyone and Mm -hmm. why people started uh, trying to pull their money out. Right. So what you're saying is that all these bonds, these securities that SVB had bought during the pandemic, they became really risky as interest rates kept rising over and over again, as they were doing here in Australia as well. And all these tech companies that had deposits at the bank, they became really nervous and they were sort of rushing to withdraw their money. But SVB, the bank actually didn't have the money to pay them, so it had to go about selling these bonds at a multi-billion dollar loss. And so the tech companies are super spooked by this stage. So what are they doing? 
you know, people started wanting to pull their money out. Mm. I came out to talk to the bank, just got in line with uh, a lot of other founders and, <laughs> and CEOs uh, just to find out what was happening and then also the options we've got. Founders basically showed up at the bank branch in Manhattan and then that included the former Lyft executive, Dor Levy. And by the time Levy and these other investors actually decided to pull their money from the bank, the site was down, their accounts were blocked, their bankers were unreachable. And it, Levy kind of says in a, in a LinkedIn post, it took him about 16 hours for the bank to unblock his account. And he actually went down to that New York branch and tried to get a cashier's check. Mm. Uh, and then he says they actually called the cops on him. So it was all quite um, colorful as it unfolded. But the bigger problem was not only were um, people spooked, but a lot of venture capital uh, funds were also telling, even com- people who didn't have deposits were telling them not to kind of bank with a Silicon Valley bank. And so it just spooked the entire sort of ecosystem of startups and tech companies. Interestingly, though, the US government was very quick, wasn't it, to bail this bank out or at least bail its customers out. Last week, when we learned of the problems of the banks and the impact they could have on jobs of small businesses and banking system overall, I instructed my team to act quickly to protect these interests. They've done that. They've done that. What did it do? So um, there's something called the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, and they not only took control of SVB, uh, deposits held with SVB, but also of another bank that collapsed afterwards called Signature Bank. Mm-hmm. All customers who had deposits in these banks can rest assured, I want to rest assured they'll be protected and they'll have access to their money as of today. And this, both Signature Bank and Silicon Valley Bank will basically have been guaranteed that there'll be no losses borne by the taxpayer. So the bank uh, regulators are now guaranteeing deposits. And under this scheme, they usually protect deposits of up to US 250000 mm. But the FDIC also confirmed they'll be backstopping all depositors of SVB, not just those with smaller ba- balances covered by the standard protection. This is an important point. No losses will be borne by the taxpayers. Let me repeat that. No losses will be borne by the taxpayers. And this is, you know, to ensure some stability and uh, ensure that, you know, people don't keep getting spooked and don't keep trying to pull out their money from from banks because there can be a contagion effect, you know. If people start pulling their money out of one bank, they might think other banks are not secure and will start pulling their money out of other banks as well. Mm, so Joe Biden's trying to assure the American public that everything's okay, he's fixed it, everybody's going to get their money back. But it's a lot of money. I guess one of the big questions here, Nassim, is what does this all mean for the tech sector? Because it was this sort of bank that was really, you know, giving it a kickstart, that was really protecting it. So what does it mean for the sector as a whole, do you think? Yeah. So basically, I spoke to Dan Ives. He's the managing director of US space Wedbush Securities. Silicon Valley Bank is uh, the godfather of the what I would view as the tech ecosystem from a banking perspective, a very important piece of the startup ecosystem. And he says, unlike with the global financial crisis, the SVB collapse doesn't pose systemic risk because the world's biggest banks are extremely well capitalized. What he does say is that despite these this not having a, a general effect, these banks were actually the foundation of the tech startup landscape. And he says that going forward, lenders will be far more stringent when it comes to funding startups. Uh, he says that could definitely cause startups to either fail or potentially have to merge or to just have to look for alternative financing, for example, going to private equity firms. I mean, you don't replace this. I mean, this is something where now other banks will come in it's going to be under a lab microscope in terms of every loan that they give to tech startups. And I think it's something that's going to be an uphill battle. And it's really going to cause a winners and losers on the startup community within tech, not just in the Valley, but around the world, you know, from Europe to Asia to Australia and everywhere. Mm. All right. So you you spoke about the contagion effect before, and I guess that's a question a lot of people now have. Could this issue spread? Could it spread around the world? 
So, I mean, part of part of the concern is that um, you know, and some people have sort of said to, this to me when I'm doing uh, interviews with them is that you know, media are spooking everyone, and the social media debates kind of spooking people more. So there is a risk of sort of wider contagion. But beyond that, there's also concerns that it could actually lead to uh, a fall in confidence, and that fall in confidence. Uh, could, you know, see, well, if there's more bank failures, that would certainly dent confidence and that would then impact uh, the economy. Mm. So I spoke to Better Shares Chief Economist, David Bassanese, and he says the collapse could actually cause a US recession. He says you may get many of these banks going under or being unable to lend. And he says these banks are sitting on a lot of unrealized losses on their bond portfolios. Uh, and technically, if they have to sell those bonds at market value, they could become insolvent. Mm. And he says that's how contagion could spread. Whether it's a systemic or not, I think, you know, remains to be seen. I mean, the thing is, they've, they've basically bailed out anyone with a bank deposit but what they haven't bailed out is bank shareholders, uh, uh, bond holders. And so, you know, bank vulnerability, I think, uh, to the increase in interest rates is going to, um, you know, may well become an issue over the next few months. While this collapse is different to, you know, the investment banks that collapsed during the GFC, if credit conditions freeze up, business access to credit, that could cause a major fall in confidence. Uh, and that fall in confidence could see a hard landing for the US economy. Now, that hard landing for the US economy obviously then has implications for other countries, including Australia. Mm, so, Nathan, what has Jim Chalmers, our treasurer, had to say about this? Should we be worried? So Treasurer Jim Chalmers said they're aware that Australian firms are impacted and that the government's monitoring potential impacts for Australians caught up in this collapse. But obviously, the regulators uh, stepped in to um, protect deposits, and that includes firms in Australia who have deposits with that bank. Uh, and he says the initial advice that they've received from regulators is that any fallout for Australia's broader financial system is unlikely to be significant. Nassim Kadem is a business reporter with ABC News. The latest bank to run into trouble is the Switzerland bank Credit Suisse. After fears the bank would run out of money, investors dumped stock, sending its shares tumbling. Industry experts here have said they're confident a bank collapse won't happen because the local system is well capitalised. But they agree it could be a factor against the RBA raising interest rates again next month. This episode was produced by Flint Duxfield, Sam Dunn and Chris Dengate, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is Stephen Smiley. I'm Sam Hawley. ABC News Daily will be back again on Monday. Thanks for listening.